In this video, I'm going to show you how to control your OBSBOT Tail 2 camera using both OBS and Ecamm Live. And we're going to be setting it up to control the camera using the PTZ controls. Both OBS Studio and Ecamm Live support the Visca camera control protocol. That means we can connect to the Tail 2 via RS-232, Visca over IP, or we can even use USB-C using the UVC control protocol. But for the purposes of this demo today, I'm going to be connecting to the Tail 2 using Visca over IP. So let's first show you where you get your IP address of your Tail 2, and then we'll show you how to set that up using OBS Studio and Ecamm Live. To find the IP address of your OBSBOT camera, we're going to go to the OBSBOT Center software. And in my case, my Tail 2 is actually connected to my network using Wi-Fi and hardwired via power over Ethernet. But for the purposes of this, I'll show you how to find your IP address. Let's go to the OBSBOT Center and let's navigate to this little gear icon at the top here. Click on this and it's going to show you a list of cameras that you've got connected to your system. If I go to the tail two here, and I just click on this little ellipsis, you'll see that we've got all this information around the device itself. I'm interested in the information down here, which is under RTSP. These are the IP addresses assigned to your camera, and these are the ones you're gonna be using to control the camera via the PTZ plugins and controls for OBS Studio and Ecamm Live. I'm going to use this one here because it's the wired network and it's the same network as my system is connected to at the moment. So it's 192.168.1.22. So let's just copy that and then we're going to use this as we connect to OBS Studio, which is what we're going to use first in this demo. To get OBS Studio to talk to your Tail 2 camera, you will need to download a plugin to start with. There's one available and I'll show you where it is. There's a link in the description to this plugin as well. It's called PTZ Controls. At the time of this video I'm recording it, we're on version 0.18.2. It's available for both Windows, Mac and Linux. And it's a simple on-screen display where you can look at and set up various controls to your camera. So we've got all the on-screen controls here. We'll go through those in a second. And then you've got the ability to save various presets regarding the position and placement of your camera. Click on the download button and then when you install it and run it, I've already done that on my system, it'll just basically show up in the plugins folder. So we'll go into OBS now and show you how to set that plugin up and then we'll start by controlling the Tail 2 camera using OBS Studio. So we've installed the plugin, but I always recommend that you reboot your machine and the software to start with just to make sure everything works fine. Let's go over to OBS Studio and show you how this is set up. Just for clarity, I've brought in the Tail 2 as a camera source into OBS via NDI, which you can see down here at the bottom. So that's my NDI source. Here's the camera. So we'll see the effect the PTZ controls have on the camera in a minute. First thing I'd like to check is go over to the tools menu at the top here and let's go into plugin manager to make sure that we have the plugin correctly installed. As I mentioned, I rebooted, but I always like to check as well. I've only got three plugins here in OBS. It's a pretty, pretty vanilla installation. The PTZ controls is the one we've just enabled and set up. We've also got Stream Deck and then the Distro AV is the one that allows me to bring the camera in as an NDI source. Next thing, let's go to tools again. And this time you should see the PTZ devices listed. This is where we're going to add the Tail 2 camera as a device to this plugin so we can control it. We've got three menus, general, cameras, and about. Let's just stick with cameras for now. You can see it's empty at the moment. So I'm just gonna add the camera and I'm gonna pick the Visca UDP in my case. And let's just click on this. And we need to give it the host IP address 192.168.1.22 is what we had before. I'm going to leave the port at default. If you've changed this on your camera, you need to make sure it matches in the settings. There's a couple of other settings down here at the bottom. These are simply showing you how many presets you can have listed. I think it's set by default at uh, 14 or 16 or something like that. It's quite a lot, 16 actually. It's a large number. That just allows you to save various different presets and positioning for your camera. Then we've got the max tilt speed, which I've left at default. So let's click apply. And you can see that the uh, 
device has changed here. So we've got Visca UDP, and then we've got the IP address and the port of the camera. Let's just close that down now. So once that's working and everything's fine, we should now see the device listed in our PTZ controls. So how do we get to that? In Docs, in OBS are basically all the various different controls. You'll see down at the bottom something called PTZ controls. Click on that, and that, depending on how you've got it set up, will either be a floating window like this, or a window that's already docked. I'm just showing you a floating window because it's easier to show you in the screen share as I'm moving the controls. Now, if everything's working fine and everything's connected, you will see your PTZ device listed down here. You can give it a name, of course, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it at default. If I start to move some of the on-screen controls, you'll see that now I'm controlling the OBSBOT camera, the tail two, via these on-screen controls. Pretty easy, I can also zoom in and zoom out. The home button basically sets it back to default. I am quite zoomed in at the moment, so if I just zoom out a little bit. Now I'm gonna save a preset or two just to show you that you can actually save presets in here and recall them as well. So if I click on the plus button down at the bottom, click on that, and I'll just name this as uh, Studio. Studio One, I'm going to sort of zoom in a little bit and then I'm gonna right click and save this as a camera preset. You've gotta actually save this first or it won't actually work. So let's do that and then let's zoom out quite a bit. Do, 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 do. Just give you a different view of the studio there. And then I'm going to click on the plus button and save another preset. I'm just gonna call this zoom. And then I'm gonna right click on that and then save the camera preset. So now if I double click on any one of these presets, I should be able to recall the settings for the tail two. So let's just double click on studio and I've double clicked on that and you can see now it's basically uh, recalled that saved position that I've just set up. And if I double click on zoom, it's gonna do the same thing as well. So it's really straightforward. Once you've got the plugins configured and set up, and you've configured your connection method, then it's really easy now to control your PTZ cameras, specifically the tail two in OBS Studio. And there's a few other things you can do. You can set and switch the various cameras in various scenes and recall the presets. I'm not gonna show you that today. I just wanted to basically explain how we connect the PTZ control plugin to the tail two, and then you've got full connectivity and being able to sort of change the status and positioning of your camera using OBS Studio. All right, that's OBS Studio. Let's now go and look at Ecamm Live. Next up, I'm gonna show you how you can control your tail two using Ecamm Live. Now, just to let you know, Ecamm Live is a Mac only software. So if you are going to be using a PC or a Windows machine, then you will need to use OBS. But for Mac users, if you want to use Ecamm Live, you can. And this is how we set up our OBSBOT cameras to be controlled by Ecamm Live. So let's go into live demo mode to start with. So this is the Ecamm Live's interface. And I'm actually gonna to switch to a scene where I have the OBSBOT camera, which is the one over there currently configured and connected to Ecamm. So unlike OBS, you don't need to install any plugins. There's no other things that you need to do in terms of setup. Any camera that you plug into Ecamm Live, whether it be a PTZ camera, one that's connected via UVC, NDI or otherwise, is automatically recognized. And we go into the camera switcher to show you exactly which cameras are actually connected to Ecamm. So if I go to camera switcher, if you don't see this, you just simply go up to window up here and then click on camera switcher. That's gonna bring up this window. Camera switcher is showing you all cameras connected to your Mac. And then that gets shown up in the all sources tab here on Ecamm Live. So I've got my tail two connected via HDMI here via the Declink quad card. I've got this other Sony camera that I'm waving at here. I've got the tiny two light camera from Obsbot and then we've got the tail two here. What you will see is once this software has recognized your camera as a PTZ device, you'll see this little icon here that looks like a control. If you click on that, you'll now see that you've got this floating window that tells you first of all the name of the camera. 
In this case, we've got the tail two. And then these are your PTZ controls, similar to what you saw in OBS. So with this, I can do the same thing. So if I want, I can zoom in here using this control and I'll zoom out again. I also have full range of control for the pan and tilt as I can do here. I'm actually gonna turn the pan tilt speed down all the way to zero. Therefore, I can get a little bit more finer control, as you can see. So I can just position the camera however I want, as before, and I'll just zoom in a little bit, a little bit up there. And then I can choose from these various presets that I've got here. You can have more than 10 if you want, but I've just got uh, 10 listed at the moment. So I'm on preset one, and I'm gonna save that one. I'm gonna now zoom out, as I did before maybe move it over to the left a little bit, maybe to the left like that. And then let's go to preset two and save that. So if I want to recall the presets, I can do the same as before. Let's go to preset one, hit recall, and it'll just switch that over. You can actually have a control here that determines how fast you want the recall speed to be. I'm just gonna leave it at default. Double clicking actually sets it to default. The same here for the zoom speed as well. So again, you can control how smooth you want your zoom to be. And as you can see, I can just zoom in and out. In fact, I'll just make another preset, but it's super easy to do. Click on presets, choose preset three, click on save, and therefore that preset is saved. I'll go back to preset two and hit recall. So similar to OBS, you can also have the various presets configured in Ecamm Live and have those associated with particular scenes. There's also another way where if you assign your tail two to a particular letter, in this case, it's just mapping a particular letter to a camera. In this case, I've got it set to camera C. You can also switch the presets from the main camera settings on here as well. So if I go to this button here, you can see that I've got camera B set up. And if I go down to, if I should be camera C is my NDI source. So there's camera C. And then I've got basically a list of presets I can recall within that camera setting. So that means I can just change that camera setting however I want based on that particular preset. So I can recall those various uh, presets as and when I'm switching to those scenes. So you can see I've just set that scene up and it's remembered the preset value and the zoom level. And now I've recalled that scene back and it's honored the preset that I've set it to in the first place. So it's super easy to set these things up in Ecamm Live. As I said, there's no plugins, and depending on what software you're using, you've got options now to control your tail to using OBS Studio or Ecamm Live. Anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you are using this workflow, if you've got any questions around this, I'd be happy to answer them. Until next time, take it easy.